Welcome to Sparks of History. We are very pleased and honored to have with us today Rabbi Yaakov Trump. Rabbi Trump ser currently serves as the rabbi of the young Israel of Lawrence Cedarhurst. Rabbi Trump, who received rabbinic ordination smicha from Yeshiva University's REITS program, sits on the board of the Vad of the Five Towns in Far Rockaway. Rabbi Trump, an accomplished speaker, writer, and educator, co-chaired the 59th annual RCA convention for hundreds of rabbis across the United States and North America. Rabbi Trump, thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate it very much. It is really my pleasure. Thank you for the invitation. To start off, there is a sense that we, the Jewish people, are living through a period of biblical proportions. Why does it feel like that? And what does that actually mean? That's a, a good question. I've really been feeling that myself. I actually was at a conference this week, um, a, a Tikva conference, and I mentioned this point. And uh, people were really moved by it, this, this particular point, is living in biblical times. I, I, perhaps I'll start from the, the angle that I, that I came to this myself, my own personal journey, and perhaps some can resonate with this is I spent a little bit of time teaching Nach or, or Tanakh, which is the Nevi'im and Suvim prophets and scriptures of the Hebrew Bible of Tanakh. And it's 742 chapters, excluding just the first section of Torah. And so if you do that five days a week, and it'll take you a little while to get, you know, just under around three years to, to get through that cycle. And so I, I, I made an effort to do that. And uh, it was very, really a very rewarding and very, um, extensive project and through the course of doing that you study the the epics you study the stories you sort of the narratives the ideas the reflections on reality of of the bible of of tanakh and uh, and and i had this this realization that a lot of people are gravitating towards this this is the language that people need this is the people that, that the language that people want and it intrigued me as to why that is i mean in fact i'm writing a paper on this topic right now and one of the one of the answers is is that the Tanakh gives us the language to understand what we're going through because up till now we've really never experienced things of this level of biblical proportion. What does it mean, biblical proportion? When you know, in terms of the events themselves, you know, having lived, you know, looking through the events of the last century, just as an example, um, when you see things as the the the, the Holocaust, the establishment of the state of Israel. Wars every de every decade, existential threats to the existence of Judaism multiple times. Um, wars which have been fought, and the resilience of people, the reestablishment of, um, of of Israel not simply as a religion but as a nation. These are things which we we haven't seen. We you know for eighteen hundred and seventy eight years, you know, sort of waiting there in diaspora reality. We we haven't seen that. I mean, we haven't experienced things um which which are clearly. Although natural are clearly supernatural, God God led events in the course of history as well. That's that's one part of it. The other part of it is 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 also our access. You know, the Vilna Gaon try to get to Israel. The Baal Shem Tov try to get to Israel. Many 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 great sages throughout the course of history try to make their way to Israel, and it was very difficult. And many of them didn't make it. And many of them had to turn around. Many many people died on the way. It wasn't it wasn't so easy to get there. If you read the introduction to the Pa'as HaShulchan by Yerav Yisrael Shklov, he describes what it was like getting to the land of Israel. And he describes how when he gets there and there was a famine and then there was a disease and then his child died and then his grandchild died and then his wife died. And literally one thing after the next, it, it, it's shocking. And we we get to complain about the coffee on an LL flight and we're there in whatever many hours, depending where you're coming from. And we get to the land of Israel, and you walk on the stones that our ancestors walk. Where we are—that's what it seems to be as in a biblical times. The, you, 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 you didn't just ask that. You asked, "What does that mean?" So, what does that mean? Is is a much harder, harder just what It's nice to be able to say that, but then what does that actually reflect as? So, um, it, I I just say a statement, and then this can be, a, and and it's, it's a very hard statement to swallow. But I think that's important, and perhaps also just interest the discussion. And that. It, I believe that when Mashiach comes, when we get to the end of this, this saga, we, we, there will be a new Tanakh written about this stage of history. And there will, of course, of course, it will reference 
past history, but this stage of history is an accelerated experience of Jewish history. Everything is moving faster, and and the magnitude of the events is much uh, is much larger. When that Tanakh is is written, there will be people and nations and cities and and countries that will be in the Pesukim, in the verses, and there'll be those who are in the Mepharshim, and those people who are maybe footnotes or Midrashim, or maybe won't even be involved in the course. Then. And that's what it means, is that when you see history unfolding as it does, one has to take a, a very careful look and, and, and self-assessment as to, am I part of that, or am I simply a bystander to it? Will I be in the verses? Will my contributions be part of the significance of this or not that, that that's the, the meaning that i see is stands out in this okay well so building on, on that point a um, couple of questions kind of connected um how can or should american jews get involved in this historic era what do observant jews in general need to do today uh, and is prayer, Torah learning, acts of kindness, chesed enough? Or do we require require a more radical refocus as Jews today? All really, really good questions. Let's start, start at the beginning. So you say, what can Ameri American Jews do to get involved during this historic era? I would free if, if, if we want to be written in the verses, or at least in the footnotes somewhere. Right, for sure. And not, not just for the sake of popularity and, and, and to be influences, but for the sake of mattering. Um, the, 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 the truth is, is that I think the question should be reframed as what should diaspora jury? And it, it, well, what happens is, is that, that, that the reason why it's framed as American jury is because, first of all, America is the, is the largest single diaspora community, but also because it, it has had trouble having the realization of the space of the diaspora Jew more than any other diasporas themselves. So, you know, if you look at the Aliyah rates in all of the other diaspora countries, where, whether it be Australia, Canada, South Africa, England, France, the Aliyah rates have been steady um, and, uh, and, uh, and commensurate with the population is, 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 is a significant continuous flow. Whereas America has not been, and now it is picking up more recently, but it, and part of that is because of the gravitas, the American community, Jewish community is one of the, in the most sophisticated, most advanced, successful community, Jewish communities in the world. And it has been until recently been a place where Jews can thrive and uh, thrive, not just survive. And with that, so to speak, that, that, that space um, comes perhaps the, 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 the missing of the, of the larger perspective sometimes as to what, what, what is afoot. And so I think that the, 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 the realization is happening now when suddenly after October 7th, people are sort of waking up and saying, wait a second, all these folks aren't necessarily all our friends, not everyone, but there seems to be a significant amount of people who either said bad things or didn't respond when others said bad things, whether it's institutionally or just, uh, or, or just on, um, in, in, uh, when a person's commuting, there's, 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 there's suddenly this realization that like every other diaspora reality, um, there, there is a runway. For for Jews and it, it's not forever. That's not it's not the long it's not a, the longest runway. Um, having said that, while being a, a you know seeing catastrophe around the corner, don't believe there's catastrophe around the corner. The question is is how do people get involved? So the, it's the wake up call, the realization of getting involved. So what 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 does that look like? So it, it looks like different things to different people. So for instance, um, you know there's the, the, there are so many different different people who are, who are doing things in their way. Um, some people are moving. Some people are saying, this is it. I want my children, I want myself, I want my grandchildren to be part of Israel. I know this is the future for the for for uh, for for the nation of Israel. And it's shifting as we see it. If you see a thing about the locus uh, the the we'll call the center of gravity of the Jewish world has shifted to Israel. It's no longer America. Culture is now moving outwards from Israel, not in outwards from America to Israel. Meaning if you if you just look at look look at pop culture for a second, you look at music. How many now of the diaspora musicians are now incorporating Hebrew songs into their into their songs? Um, the Minister of Diaspora Affairs, the Minister of Education in Israel, is allocating funds to help the diaspora Jews. That was never the case before. It was all these mag uh, magnanimous donors tried to help the state of Israel. Israel's at a point now where, yes, it's it's very appreciates the over a billion dollars that came in you know on donations in the last three months. That that that's been extremely helpful. At the same time. 
Israel itself is now projecting energy outwards as well. So as that shift happens, what are, what, what are we doing? So there's so many new good. Is there people who are saying, I want to be part of that. I want my kids to be part of that. Even if I can't fully be part of it, I'll be the immigrant so my kids can have that. My grandkids can have a chance. Um, there, are other, there, are, there are others who are doing missions. We came back. I've been on two missions, one rabbinic, one, one with the community. Um, other people are, are, are raising incredibly important funds. Um, other people are doing, are, are doing the, the, the packing. The, the the letter writing that all and is an amazing we have a we have a warehouse here with some incredible individuals who are doing this day and night and you know tons and tons of material I, I, uh, is being sent and here's what is being sent there are those who are davening there are those who are saying to heal him there are the, those who are go, ratcheting up their spiritual lifestyle and and the truth is, is I think that everybody needs to be doing what they can do more so meaning that that that, that, that right now is not the time to uh to to say it's being done now it's it's the time to be doing something at the same time i'll just put a foil to that um and uh, and and challenge people on this as well and that is that um, rabbi ilan feldman told me the story that in the 90s when he when he was in, in atlanta with his father rabbi emmanuel feldman he he said listen isn't this like mashiach this is like this is the messiah coming yeah, you have the East, the West, the, the Christian world, the world of Islam, all converging on Israel, the Scud missile, missiles, and like, you know, this is this is it. And his father said, no, it's not going to be a Mashiach because Neri is just going to become more Neri Israel, Chabad's going to become more Chabad, and Yu's going to become, become more Yu, and everybody's just going to carry on doing what they do well more. And so on the one hand, everybody should be doing what they're doing well, but then we should also be moving a little bit out of our comfort zone. So if our thing is packing bags, maybe we should be doing a little more Tehillim. If our thing is only doing to, to, to heal him, maybe we should be packing more bags. Meaning everybody needs to be going out of or seeing what habits they're doing that need to be changed or what beliefs they were embracing that need to be dropped because it, otherwise the, the, this this was for for not. It, was, it, 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 it missed our mark, at least for us, uh, in, in that involvement. Um, you, you had mentioned uh, the, the, the missions um, and... You know, Robert Trump, you had sent me videos and pictures of, of which I went through, um, which which were inspiring. Uh, and w- what were your overall impressions of uh, your recent um, Young Israel Lawrence Cedarhurst mission? And what messages did you bring back specifically to your community in the five towns? Um, it was it was very overwhelming. It was very overwhelming to 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 go to Israel. The language was being you're speaking from Israel. And you you know that the, the language, the air has changed. The atmosphere has changed in Israel. People are 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 living in a different in a different way than they used to beforehand. Uh, so the first the first mission the first the first message is that it is um, is uh, the impression is that people Israel's where it's happening. Right now, there's a, a significant understanding in the streets of Israel. That history is being made. This, that, that this is a critical time. That Hamas needs to be eliminated. That that, that we need to come together. That this division is not is not is not going to res- is not going to bring us to a good end. And th- there's there's a very keen awareness of that hi- um, of that of that his of that history and that and that moment that we're in right now. Um, I, and so for for me, part of that is 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 the impression of coming back and saying is, you know, what what. What are our children? What, what matters to our children if we live in the diaspora or if we live in Israel? You know, the decisions that are being made by 18-year-olds, 19-year-olds, 20-year-olds, Israelis, you know, are, are, are decisions which could mean life and death. Where the decisions being made are decisions which have to be made by heroes. And then you go to the diaspora reality, and some of those decisions are about entitlement, about uh, expectation, and and one one has to realize that 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 there is a very difference in the culture of where one is and what matters. And so, so one of one of the impressions that, I, that 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 struck me is is how keyed in everybody is there, and how not keyed in a lot of people are here, and and to try to bridge that gap. And part of that is 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 you need to get there, you need to get there, you need to go, you know, you need to go to Israel. And see it, and help, and cry, and laugh, and sing, and be there in the moment. Be there in Israel, because otherwise, otherwise, one's missing the boat. And I don't mean as a boutique group. There's lots of people going on their own little missions, and that's. I mean, it's well intended. Um, as, as, as in general, everybody should go and help. But you know, 
there's there's a difference between going with an institution and a shul and and a rabbi and somebody who can really lead you through this process and has and there's a gravitas of a group that you're not tiring out the people or being a burden on the people that you visit. Um, but the point is, is 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 come together as communities, go to Israel, see what's going on, bring that language and become an ambassador for that language to connect ourselves because we will be richer when we understand that we're part of it because they are part of it and they know what's going on in Israel. We in in in, in the diaspora are still struggling to. To, to find that as well. Are you finding, uh, Rabbi Trump, that that people are doing that? I know, I, I think it's Yeshiva Week now in, in, in America, or Yeshiva Weeks. People are planning trips or going on trips. Do you find that there's an awareness of that and people are have are now thinking, well, maybe we should be coming to, to Israel and, you know, participating and helping and doing whatever, you know, their strengths are? People, every does, every struggling also in their own way, and I, I believe that everybody cares very, very deeply about this, and everybody's trying in their own way to do it. At the, time, at the same time, they're also struggling to to balance regular life. They're trying to balance the fact that their kids want them to go to Florida for 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 the yeshiva break. They're, they're balancing trying to find normality while you know at the same time as you know they call it doom scrolling. Um, you know, just sort of, you know, just going through, finding more and more, more anti-Semitic incidents or more and more critiques of Israel around the world that are related to that. One needs a break. One needs a mental health space as well. And so uh, there, there, there are different camps. And I think that, that there, there's the camp of people who can't hold themselves back. Every few weeks they're back in Israel and it's amazing. They just they just can't stop themselves. They need to be there. They need to be, uh, you know, uh, bringing bags and doing things. And it's amazing. Quite like a boy. Um, and then the group in the middle who's sort of like with younger kids and it's harder for them to just get out. And a lot of them really made the time to get to Israel and try, or, or making time and I call like to them. And then the, the group I find that need a little bit more uh, work, work on, which is the group which is, you know, they're still going out, you know, to for cruises and they're still doing things, which is which is wonderful. But if you are going to be taking time, how could that time not be Israel? Meaning... If you're also going to Israel and you're also doing amazing things for Israel, yes, then then you can take that, that trip, but it should not be normal. This is not a normal time for vacation right now. And uh, let, 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 let the vacation be and, meaning let it be after Israel, let it be in addition to what one's doing to Israel, but it, sh- it cannot be that things are normal right now with, with what's going on. And if one doesn't know that, then one obviously hasn't spent enough time reading, seeing, or visiting Israel to know what's really happening on the ground. Okay, uh, Rabbi Trump, are you optimistic um, about the future of American Jewry? About the future of Israel? Are you pessimistic? Somewhere in between? I'm not. I'm not the world's expert on anything, but um, I, just from my from my little perspective in the trenches um, of uh, of of where where we stand, I am optimistic and pessimistic at the same time. I'm optimistic. Israel is remarkable, and the people are remarkable. The resilience, which is shown, the emuna, which people are displaying, is is unparalleled. And uh, obviously, despite all the suffering and pain, the most remarkable displays of humanity, dedication, commitment, to nationhood, I have been on display in Israel in a way that's um, one's never seen beforehand. It's 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 very vitalizing. Um, in in Chutz Aretz, you see an incredible resurgence of identity, Jewish Jewish pride, and uh, and and that that's that's truly incredible. Um, and the, the pessimism is 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 that you know right now in America, the outside of the Orthodox community, um, the intermarriage marriage rate in the last peer report was seventy four percent. You know, and so that means say one in every four Jews is getting married to a Jew. We know that the statistics when when there is intermarriage. Is that uh, is that less than a quarter of those uh, of those marriages will send their children for any form of Jewish education? So we're we're, we're talking about a hemorrhaging of the Jewish identity of 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 people in uh, of Jews who are not um, identifying or not go, their grandchildren will have trouble identifying with the same values as their grandparents as 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 Jews, which is going to be which is a tremendous tragedy. But at the same time, there is an awakening right now, and I, I think that there is a I'm optimistic that. This allows people to find themselves, allows people to to ask themselves what really matters. What am I really? Where am I going? What do I want to be part of? And I, I think that there is there is there is optimism in the moment if it will if it will last. Just in conclusion, uh, currently uh, we're we're reading the uh, Torah, the Bible portions that are 
uh, talking about um, the slavery in Egypt and now the redemption from from Egypt. And any thoughts in, in connecting what we're reading about today? Any Torah thoughts to the current situation? Uh, good, as, a, as a great question. That's a great question. Um, you, uh, the, the, I think that the, the as as the Mephorshim talk about is the exile from Egypt is the in a certain sense the archetype for all other exiles and redemptions as well, and so we find ourselves in that way as well. I, I would say that perhaps one of those aspects is is that um, is that redemption comes through pain. And there's a lot of this. It wasn't a simple, wasn't simple, and it didn't happen in one moment. It, there were stages. In fact. Um, and it civ explains that when it says that then that the Almighty took us out in four stages, um, that there is this four different ways in which Hashem extracts the nation of Israel. There were four stages. They were sequential. They weren't describing the same thing. They were describing specific different stages. In fact, when Moshe Rabbeinu first came, the nation was excited at the beginning, but then nobody wanted to go to Pharaoh with him. And then when, when the Pharaoh... Uh, hardened the work, rem removed the supplies. You know, people started complaining. It, it was it was long and it was arduous and it wasn't simple. And I think that there's a lot to be said about that as well. I think there's also another part of that is that it became the time where you know if you look in academic history, then the nation of Israel were called Hebrews at the time. That was who they were. They were, they were these foreigners. They were they were these you know Me'ever la Nahar Ivrim. But uh, through the course of Exodus, you start seeing the realization that they're not Ivrim. They're B'nai Yisrael, they're the children of Israel, not just B'nai, but they are the Am Yisrael, they're the, the nation of Israel. That sort of, I found, find that perhaps in our times as well, it's worthwhile looking at that language. The language Jew is in fact a diaspora term. You see it used in Megiddo's Esther at the exile during the Persian era. But that's not the name that Tanakh uses for, for, for Jews, um, for up to Megiddo's Esther. The word used is Yisrael is the nation of Israel. And I think that we're seeing that right now in our days, the shift from Judaism as a religion practiced in a diaspora reality to being a nation in Israel by a, a, by a people called Israel and people who are Israelis as a nation. And I think that, that we as Jews around the world are starting to realize that larger identity that we, we, we have. And that, uh, that is very clear to me, is, is, is a reflection of Yetzirah Mitzrayim. In, in our common age. Okay. Uh, Rabbi Trump, thank you so much um, for your thoughts and uh, inspiration, and uh, we appreciate it very much. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be sharing it. Thank you for the opportunity.